was right in the beginning of trying to duplicate uh, Shadowburn's 3D setup for the CO2 jelly. We're at uh, 0 0.09 amps, 1.1 volt, and we've got approximately the same size container. I'm using a different salt because I didn't want to have the anti-caking agent. We've got the carbon welding rod, which is what he was using. I have some other carbon rods, but I uh, decided to do this. I don't have an actual zinc rod, but I rolled some zinc sheet and created a round cylindrical uh, electrode out of zinc. So, and then we have the small LED green hooked up so that the negative side is to the carbon rod also, positive side to the zinc. And um, with this amount of current and voltage, I don't see the LED lighting. It's probably because the salt solution is drawing most of the current. So <clears throat> you can see right now we are getting some bubbles down in here around the carbon. We're only about a quarter of an inch into the salt solution with the electrodes. That's what Shadow Burn 3D was doing. So um, this is just at the very beginning of the process. I will pause this video and resume after it's been going for about an hour or so. Okay, we're back here. It's about an hour and 50 minutes since I did this. I said I'd come back in about an hour, but um, there's not much happening in terms of guns production around the carbon rod like uh, Shadow Burn 3D was getting after about an hour he said. Uh, you can see, mm, if you look at it at the right angle, you can see there's a slight layer of it looks like CO2 gums that is forming near the bottom of the container. This is a plastic container so it's a little harder to see it but you, right there with the backlight still available um, you can see it I believe. I can see it in the video here. Um, I have checked to make sure that the diode is good and is hooked up properly. If I lift this up so that the electrodes leave the water, you can see the diode lights up. So <clears throat> it is the extra current draw being taken by the saltwater solution that's not allowing the diode to light up otherwise because it doesn't quite have enough juice. So <clears throat> That's about all I had to report. I've, I've taken and adjusted down to 0.08 um, on the power supply. However, it's actually at about 0.09. I tested this with my meter and the power supply is not displaying uh, the amperage as accurately as the meter can. So I went with the meter and I adjusted it so that I had 0.09 amps on the meter. We'll have a look again in another few hours. Okay, here we are. It's about three hours and 15 minutes. Um, I'm still not really seeing any of the gel accumulating around the carbon electrode like Shadow Burn 3D was getting. So I'm not sure if that's because of the difference in salt. He was using the Morton Mediterranean sea salt. That's just bubbles you're seeing there. Um, whereas I'm using this uh, by Whole Foods natural sea salt I'm getting over here in the UK. It's actually a pretty clean salt, um, but it doesn't have any anti-caking agent in it. And it could be the anti-caking agent is actually facilitating something. So. Um, I'm going to show you. We are getting a very nice looking CO2 gons forming in here. You can see over there underneath of the zinc electrode there's a nice little mound kind of falling away from the, the electrode and it's forming a layer here across, across the whole bottom. Um, it looks pretty fluffy. It almost looks gel-like actually down here. It's just not on the top. Now I'm noticing that there is some um, almost like little gel cells clinging to the walls. It's pretty hard to see them in the video, but if you look really close, you can see some right there on the wall of the plastic container. 
that's not actually bubbles um, there's some of those too but right there you can kind of see it um, well, actually that's rising up now I just uh, also it hasn't really looked as though it's making any difference at the moment but about 10 minutes ago I put a small one inch nano copper spiral underneath the center of this container and um, I saw that there was field interactions between it and some other GONS sediments that I had in the bottom of another jar and um, so we'll see if that helps create somewhat of a plasmatic field that helps this GONS to um, form not sure if we'll see any any evidence of that or not but I'll be watching it so um, any event uh, that's where we're at after about three hours it's actually a pretty nice looking little collection of guns for only three hours so um, I do believe that just having the electrodes you can see they're only in there about a quarter of an inch that was shadow burns 3d's um, method and I, I believe using a shallower container that's good because it's keeping the electrodes out of the guns it's forming I've had problems with that having the electrodes too deep in my other jars so I was looking for taller jars but this may be a good alternative so anyway we'll keep this video going and um, go right to where we stop okay so we're at about seven hours with this running and um, I just came down here I was going to start the camera and I, I bumped the carbon electrode there was almost like a complete column of this gons between the zinc which is the one on the far side and the gons that's sitting on the bottom of the container what happened was when I bumped this carbon rod it then broke that loose and it fell to the bottom you can kind of see it sitting over there that little lump but at the top is the remainder of the zinc electrode it's got this it's still coated in this and it's floating um, obviously it's been eroded away through the electrolysis process there's not much of it left this was this thin zinc sheet that was rolled because I didn't I can't access zinc rod here in the UK so uh, not at a reasonable price so anyway I'm going to stop this process and let this all settle out but this is actually looking like very nice CO2 gons. It's not got that zinc oxide look to it. And that looks like a fairly decent amount there for only about seven hours of electrolysis. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, stop this process now, let it settle out overnight. It looks very um, like it has a lot of gel, like a gel look to it, even though it's not floating around the carbon electrode like uh, shadow burn 3ds was um, I'm encouraged by this so okay I think it's been good and um, we're still over here at the 0.08 amps uh, the voltage has gone up just a little bit so that's it um, and uh, we'll do this again and I'll report on it. I'll, I may make a few changes and experiment with a few other things. Okay, um, I just went to um, terminate this process and I pulled these electrodes out and I discovered that the zinc had not uh, eroded or deteriorated at all. Um, that it was just, uh, it was actually a piece of the uh, guns that was floating. It looked like the end of the electrode for some reason I wasn't seeing the end of the electrode in the solution so I went and cleaned the electrodes off and I restarted the process um, and the, that little piece of gons dropped down to the bottom you can see it over there under the far side sitting on the bottom it's very gelatinous like though it's, it's very fluffy kind of gelatinous it's not like the zinc oxide type gons um, and you can actually see that over here on the um, the negative side on the carbon rod electrode there there is some gel forming over here um, you can see it right there kind of hanging down off the bottom of it and um, so it's encouraging we'll stay with this process I may let this run overnight this way 
and see what we have in the morning. Okay, we've completed the um, uh, the guns making the CO two guns making that I was filming and documenting, uh, trying to get the gel that Shadowburn three D had gotten. Um, so um, this is I've already removed the electrodes, turned the power off, uh, mm, probably about an hour and a half ago. And I, I've stirred this up and it's now settling. Um, what I've noticed is that probably about the first six hours is where the most gel-like uh, CO2 gobs was being created. Um, this now has clearly has more zinc oxide in it. And, um, and I did lose some of the zinc electrode. You can see that it's shortened up uh, overnight. It went to the top of the water, it ate it off. So <clears throat> I do believe that with this process, probably at least under the conditions that I'm working with and all the materials I have and so forth, that within the first six hours it should be stopped and then and then harvested even though you're not getting as much and then, and then go at it again to get the mysis gel. I don't know exactly why I'm not getting the gel so quickly on the, and floating on the top around the carbon electrode like Shadow Burn 3D was getting, but um, it could be the salt. It could be also the concentration of salt because his description of using 15% by volume, I'm not sure what that means. I asked him to clarify. I haven't gotten an answer yet. And uh, so I used the, the formula that most of the Kesh people are using where they say 10% solution, which is actually not an accurate scientific term because they're saying if you have 100 milliliters of water, you use 10 grams of salt. Um, that's amount. That's 10% of salt weight by volume of water used. So that's what I did here with the 15%. I had one liter of distilled water or deionized water, and I used 150 grams of salt. So maybe I need to be using more salt to get the effect he's using, or maybe even his salt is, is creating a different effect. So anyway, I'll be working more with this, but I know that I can get a decent gel if I don't let it go so long. Letting it go overnight, I, it's clear that I got more zinc oxide in there than I had before um, I went to bed. Okay, that's it. Click show more below the video to get uh, more of the specifics that went into this project and also a link to Shadow Burn 3D's YouTube channel. That's where I'm trying to replicate and um, he's doing some great stuff so go check him out.